Adam, thank you very much for coming on. Now, uh, we, we know you, you're living in, in the sort of, well, everywhere in England south of me, but you're, you're in the more southern part of England. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on, Adam. Re really appreciate it. I know you haven't been feeling great lately. And, and how are you feeling at the moment? Um, I'm still feeling quite unwell um, most days. But I mean, the last the last week or so, I've started to see a bit of an improvement of my symptoms, but it's still obviously like no way near how I was doing before all this mm. started. So yeah, not too bad. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like you're putting a pretty brave face on it. I'm delighted it's been it's it's been a good week. But have things kind of been going up and down a bit? If you haven't been, up, been having good days, bad days, better weeks, worse weeks. Um, yeah, it's, it's been like really up and down. Like, mm. um, there's been some times where I almost feel completely recovered again. And mm. then suddenly all the symptoms will come back like really strong. So yeah, it is really up and down. Definitely. Yeah. And before this started, you were a young, you're 22, Adam, aren't you? I'm 22. Yeah. And you, you're a math, you a math student, I think, weren't you? Uh, math student, yeah. Math student. Yeah, yeah. I, I was never a math student, but a good, a good job that some people could do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and before this, you were you were pretty fit. You were doing sports. You were doing all the young person's things. Um. Yeah. No. Before this, I was skateboarding pretty much like every single day for like mm. a couple hours a day, and mm. having like no issues at all, like with anything. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's how it should be at your age. You don't think about it. You just do it. It's... Mm. Yeah, yeah. And you're in that category, yeah. And and then let's do a bit of a timeline, Adam. What what happened when? Um. So I got my first um, Pfizer dose on mm -hmm. the second of July, twenty twenty one, last year. Yeah, that's that's so quite a while back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um. So that was your second dose, Adam, was it? Uh, that was my first dose. That was your first dose, sorry, my mistake, yeah. That's all right. And yeah. um, so the first initial thing was having the taste of metal in my mouth, which was, like, happened, like, almost as soon as I had the shot. And... So we're, talk we're talking seconds. Yeah, yeah, like, seconds after I'd got it. And... At, the, at that point, I, like, wasn't really worrying about anything. So like, I just thought, oh, that's probably just normal. Like, I don't know. I didn't really think about it that much. <laughs> but then I do remember, like, asking my family, oh, did any of you guys get a taste of metal? And they were all just like, oh, no, um, we don't really know what that's about. So I don't know. <laughs> um I mean, you've probably seen the videos that we did with uh, Nick and Kyle on this channel, and they they both describe exactly the same mm. experience, just just within seconds of getting the the, the vaccine, the the metallic taste. What, what what was it like? Was it quite a strong metallic taste, or? Um, it was yeah, it was really like really strong, like bitter, like chemically metal taste, like. I don't really know how to explain it, but sure. um, it's a bit like sucking a copper coin or something like that, sucking a two p piece or something. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, kind of like that. It's quite unpleasant. And did that? Did the, how long did that last for, Adam? Did it... um, I think that ended up. I had that taste for, I think like the rest of the day, and then I think it started to go away the next day, and then um, I didn't have any of the the normal like side effects like um i didn't feel unwell or anything like i didn't feel tired um so then so i had like none of the normal side effects and then this was almost exactly two weeks later i was on holiday with my um mum and my sister in cornwall and we were just like walking down the street normally and I just randomly had this really strong feeling like I was about to pass out kind of thing. And it was like a really intense feeling. Um, so then 
um, I managed to get back to the place we were staying and I just like lied down um, because I thought I had like heat stroke or something because I didn't really know what it was so I just tried to lie down and it kind of like slowly the feeling started getting worse and worse like instead of getting better it was just slowly getting worse and worse that you were about to lose consciousness yeah and like um my heart started like pounding out of my chest and i was really dizzy so like i had to stay lying down otherwise like it felt like the room was like moving almost so so if you sat up the feeling got worse yeah yeah like even just sitting up a little bit it would get a lot worse um so then i was just like thought i could just sleep it off and like it was just heat stroke um and then the next day i woke up and i started feeling like my hands and my feet were starting to go numb and but but both hands and both feet yeah both hands both feet like symmetrical yeah and um so then i was i was telling my mum and my sister like oh i think something like really serious is happening and like they they were trying to like reassure me like um oh sometimes if you're anxious like yeah. your hands and feet could go a bit numb so like i, I was trying to like stay calm it's understandable that they didn't want anything to be wrong with you so they were trying to minimize mm, definitely definitely yeah. um pretty terrifying for you though yeah yeah it was really really well, i've never felt anything like it and um so then over the next couple of days the numbness like started spreading like all the way up my arms and then all the way up both my legs and it it kind of like each day like more of my arm would be numb and like more of my legs would be numb and then yeah it just got to the point where like my legs and my arms were almost completely numb and um yeah that yeah did you feel them adam or was it i mean were we able to move them normally it was just like a could you um, still talk and stuff yeah i could still i could still move them but um it just felt kind of weird like i I was like moving someone else's arm kind of thing and um i could kind i could kind of walk but even standing up i was still getting the the vertigo and the dizziness dizziness, yeah 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 so i was just pretty much in bed for like a whole week and we still getting the palpitations at this stage. You could still feel your heart going some sometimes. Um, yeah, it wasn't constantly. I would just have there'd be small periods where I, my heart would start going really fast, and I'd have like some kind of like chest pains when it was happening. <clears throat> where where, thought, where was the chest pain, Adam? Oh, it was kind of like directly where my heart is, kind of like. Kind of like there. Did the pain kind of go anywhere? We say referred pain. Did it go anywhere? Um, what do you mean? Sorry. Was it? Like, did you feel the pain like going into your arm or up into your neck or um, down to your top so, of your tummy? So it wasn't like spreading. Like I would get pain there, and then sometimes I would get pain like in the left side of my jaw, and then kind of on that bit of my arm. On, on your left arm or your right arm, Adam? Uh, always my left arm. Always my left arm. And so then... Oh, and then also when this was happening, I started getting uh, tremors in my legs and then in my hands a bit. And I think at that point was when um, I ended up calling 111. And then that's when I ended up uh, going to A&E and stuff. But yeah. And um, what what happened in A&E? Um so the first time I went to A&E it was when I was having like a really bad episode. Like um I remember thinking 
like I was having some sort of stroke or something because all the other symptoms were still really bad but then I was also like I had like a really strong pressure like on my head like almost like crushing inwards and I was like feeling kind of like confused and didn't really know like like I couldn't really have a conversation or anything because I was just like everything in my body was just like just felt like it was going wrong kind of thing um so then I went to A&E and um I remember we had to wait for about two hours I think and like I just felt like so ill and like I could, I could like hardly sit in my chair because like sitting up straight made everything way worse um and then we finally saw someone and um I think they were doing like a blood pressure test on my arm or something and I could like um you know when they like measure your heartbeat you can kind of hear a beep yeah. out loud yep but like my heart was kind of like almost like beeping like randomly like there wasn't a straight beat to it it just kind of it was going like all over the place and I think the blood pressure so it was irregular I think so yeah like I'm I'm not sure really but um and also when they were trying to measure the blood pressure like it wouldn't for some reason it wouldn't take the measurement properly like it kept not being able to do it so I don't know if that meant my blood pressure was just going up and down or something but I'm not sure really did they do it manually with a stethoscope um they were doing it with one of the automatic ones where it yeah, just... if that didn't work did they then try and use a manual one no no but they the guy the guy was just kind of asking me like do you know what day it is like do you know where you are and I was like I was kind of struggling to even answer that mm. but um he ended up just like saying oh yeah um go outside and then you'll get seen by someone else in a bit and then I ended up getting sent to I think I got sent to like the intensive care part of a &E or whatever yeah yeah and then um the resuscitation we'd normally call it yeah but yeah absolutely yeah I think so and then um they ended up doing like a ECG sure. um and then I think at this point my symptoms had like started to get a little bit better mm. um so then they did the ECG and then um they got back to me and they were like um your ECG looks normal and um, we're pretty sure either you have heat stroke or you have anxiety. Um, but I, I like knew, like my gut instinct was that knew, yeah. this, this isn't anxiety. Like this, this felt like way worse. Um, but yeah, that's. that's were, 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 were you weeing normally? Were you producing as far as you remember, were you going for normal kind of wheeze? Um, I think I remember I was like going like quite frequently. Yeah. That, like, I definitely remember that being a thing. See, if you'd had heat stroke, you, if you had heat stroke, you'd be dehydrated and not weeing properly. Yeah, I, I didn't have. So I, I, th I, I think that basically like that. rules out heat stroke. Yeah. Yeah. So quite why they would say that baffles me. Yeah. And I mean, because at that point, I'd been having these symptoms for like a week and I'm pretty sure with heat stroke that it shouldn't really last a week. Well, heat think. stroke, you become dehydrated and you run out of salt and you start feeling ill because of that. It's that's. Oh, OK. OK. And that's clearly not what you had. No. The, the So you, you reported the fact that you'd had these palpitations. You felt this irregular thumping heart rate mm. uh, and, and you heard the 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 the, the beep was abnormal when you were listening to it but then they came yeah. back and said your heart rate was your, your, your ecg was normal mm, yeah yeah okay then i'm, I'm not sure if because i remember when they were measuring it 
the first time I was having really, really intense symptoms. And then when they did it the next time, it kind of calmed down a little bit. So it's quite possible that you could have changed from having what we call a, a dysrhythmia, an abnormal heart rate, to having a normal one. That's, mm. that, that, that is possible. Yeah. The, the other thing that's concerned me about what, what you've said so far is, is um, the, the, the pain that you were describing and, and where that pain went, that distribution of the pain does sound like heart related pain. Mm. Uh, so, so that history alone would, would, would concern me enough um, uh, to, to take you straight, straight to, uh, you know, if you, if you came to my A&E &E, &E department when I was a staff nurse on A&E, I would take you straight to the senior consultant. Mm if you'd reported that because yeah. that that would be enough to concern me and anyway what, what diagnosis did you get on um uh, on a and e uh well my anxiety yeah my diagnosis was basically they just said like a combination of the two they were like um you might have got a heat stroke and then that made you feel anxious and now you're just this is just anxiety or something they like they they basically said they they couldn't find anything so that's that's like the only thing they could say they but they they didn't really um they didn't really do any more tests or anything they just said that's but, but you reported to them that you felt the worst you'd felt in your life mm, yeah yeah and they, wrote, they basically wrote that off as anxiety yeah yeah well, the, I, I am so sorry that happened. I mean, to to use a psychological stroke psychiatric explanation mm. when you have an exhausted or physical possibilities to me is one of the most fundamental mistakes you can make in medicine. Yeah, because you knew it wasn't an anxiety. And from what you've described to me, even though we're only on a Skype call, I know you're not just described. Obviously, you're anxious as a result of this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Obviously, it's ter it sounds terrifying. I'm, I'm <laughs> shaking just listening to you. But, but, but you know, to go through that, you, you, you clearly know the difference, and you're clearly a lucid historian. You, you can tell the difference. Mm, yeah. Um, so, um, what happened after that? So that we're in, a, we're in about so that so two weeks after the vaccine, the symptoms started. Mm -hmm. About a week after that, you went to, to A and E. Yeah, yeah. How, how did the time after that go? Um, so after that, um, it kind of like, this is when I was kind of like thinking like, oh, could this be a reaction to the vaccine or something? Because I think, um, it started reading about it at that time. Yeah. And I was just thinking like, it doesn't make any sense that they're saying I have anxiety when my symptoms are way worse like that that didn't really make any sense and um i mean j just before we go on i mean I i'm i'm quite happy to admit adam i i've had uh, anxiety episodes mm, yeah and, um it's it's is just awful mm. but i didn't have those and I, i've worked I, I was a psychiatric nurse i've worked with a lot of people with extreme anxiety yeah and and, and this just doesn't sound like anxiety. The the cardiac distribution pain doesn't sound like anxiety. Mm. Uh, the palpitations and the irregular heart rates certainly don't sound like anxiety. And and particularly the because if you're an anxious, your heart rate will be high, your blood pressure will be high. Yeah. So why, why would you go dizzy when you stood up and when you sat up? That, yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. completely. In, you know that, that that you're describing a. What you're describing there is a cerebro hypoperfusion event that you know when you're standing up sending up the blood's not going to your brain properly mm. that's just not an anxiety feature that i can relate to or that i've seen in in, in many many anxious people that, that i've worked with so um yeah it sounds like to me you're describing an organic yeah biological condition and that's clearly what clearly what you were feeling mm. yeah definitely so, so in the week after A and E, what what happened then? Um, so after that, it's just like the symptoms kind of just stayed like really, really severe. Um, the numbness was kind of like just stayed the same, like it wasn't getting any better. So at this stage, it was both arms and both legs. Both arms and both legs, yeah. Did it go into the body, into the torso at all, or did it kind of stop at the top of your legs? Um, it went like a tiny bit, um, 
it was like below my belly button. Like it never got up to my belly button. Um, and then so my symptoms kind of just stayed the same for a while. Um, but then the tremors started getting quite a lot worse. So they were getting more intense. And I was starting to have like almost like episodes, almost like twice a day when my symptoms would get really bad. Um, and then I think, oh yeah, then um, we had to come back from holiday because it got so bad. And um, I think I ended up going to A&E another time because it like just wasn't getting any better. And then um what happened at that visit to AE? Uh pretty much the exact same thing. Um they just said um uh like you really need to see a like a psychiatrist or a psychologist and get prescribed um so like a, anxiety medication. Uh, and again, they're, they're attributing what I what you and me believe to be completely physical symptoms as, as psychological. Mm yeah and then um than that adam yeah and then um and then this this was the time as well when um i was having quite a lot of trouble just walking properly and the nurse that was seeing me um was like oh can you walk properly and then i was trying to walk down the hallway and i was like going really slowly like it was really obvious and Mm. she just said oh but you can still walk so you so seem yeah and then so like they were just making it out like i was really anxious and that um i don't know <laughs> i don't know again, you seem to be minimizing it you, yeah. you're complaining of symptoms and they were yes butting mm. yeah yes but you could yeah yeah and um that's as well when i was having like quite bad tremors in my legs where they were shaking and um the nurse was saying like oh it's all right like you can relax now everything's fine and I was like like I couldn't control what my legs were doing or anything and yeah so then it was basically the same thing they just said um you need to like get treatment for anxiety and stuff and then I just got sent home and that was a that was pretty much it <laughs> i'm just trying to remain calm here adam because what, what you're telling me just outrages me <laughs> right to the very core of my body but if i get mad it won't help the communication <laughs> but uh, i'm, I'm feeling right. it um so it's, this is taken as what so into mid-august now um i think yeah at this point it had been like three or four weeks of having like really bad symptoms mm -hmm. Um, and then this was when, um, I saw there was a video, I think I've watched a video on Instagram of a girl, I think her name was Georgia Rose or something. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, a video of her saying, um, this is what happened to me after my, um, Pfizer vaccine. And it's a video of her like shaking and like not being able to walk properly. And it was like pretty much the exact same symptoms I was having. So I was like, started to put it together. Like, oh, maybe I'm having the same thing. And then um, she ended up saying um, the best way was to see like a neurologist privately because she had the same experience where doctors were just dismissing her um so then i ended up seeing a private neurologist um and had an mri scan to like rule out any like brain damage or anything and um so then i ended up getting diagnosed as having a functional neurological disorder i think it's called yeah um but then even then i, th I thought like the neurologist was like quite quick to kind of diagnose me as having right. that. Were you still getting the chest pain at this time, Adam? Um, I think I was getting it like it wasn't that strong, but I was there were times where I was getting 
chest pain definitely yeah 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 i think we should just say functional a functional condition is one where there is no identified biological correlation mm. so it sounds like what is done is look at the mri scan and say it's normal yeah which is great. yeah yeah definitely. but you're still getting these neurological symptoms therefore it's functional that seems to be the way his thinking was going yeah I think but, but so. as you say that you seem to arrive at that diagnosis fairly quickly yeah and then i think i i remember i even brought up um like is there a chance this could be a reaction to the vaccine because the symptoms started so close to when i'd got it and then he said something like um the chance of you having um a reaction to the vaccine is like one in a million and then the chance of you having a neurological disorder is like way more common so then he just kind of said he didn't really think that could be it but i don't really know <laughs> anyway he didn't seem yeah. to follow that one up yeah yeah <laughs> So an, another disappointment from the medical system, for sure. And you had to pay for that, for goodness sake. Yeah, quite, quite a That's lot of money. That's te yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Should have, should have gone straight through on the NHS with that severity of symptoms as an emergency referral. Mm. Yeah, so weird. And what, what, what happened after that, sort of into autumn time? Um. So then, I think, so... My symptoms, oh yeah, that's when as well I started getting like some weird like vision issues. So like I was seeing like quite a lot of like flashing dots and stuff and like my vision would kind of like flash white and then go back to normal sometimes. And then, oh, but then as well the numbness in my legs and my arms started to go away so that started to get better mm. um and i think oh yeah i got prescribed a medication called propanolol i think it was called yeah it, th th that's what we call a beta blocker mm. yeah slow slows the heart rate down and things like that yeah yeah and then i was take um did that seem to help I, um so i was taking it for like a week or two but I, like it almost felt like it was making it worse but then the neurologist had told me like oh this should this should make the symptoms better and they should just go away on their own um but then like i kind of felt like it was making me feel more ill kind of thing the, the papanadol seemed to make you feel worse yeah like it was it was just making me feel like really sick Again, and, that, 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 that actually makes quite a lot of sense because what the propanolol would do, it, it limits the ability of your heart to pump out blood as quickly. Mm. So given that your heart probably wasn't working properly anyway. Yeah. For example, if you did, if it turned out from your symptoms, you did have uh, myocarditis and from, and from the pain and the dizziness, it does sound that that's a serious possibility. Yeah. The propanolol would further suppress the activity of the heart. Mm. Mean, may making the heart pump, pump lever even less efficiently and yeah. then by reducing the blood supply to your brain and that's what would make you feel worse and make you feel dizzier yeah yeah so you, you had to stop taking that after about a week yeah yeah um and then basically since then it's just been like i basically been in bed most of the time and such so like the the tremors and stuff like started to get a bit better but then they'd all come back like get worse again and it was just like um i ended up having a period where i almost felt like completely better for a bit mm. and then that's when i ended up going back to university for like this was at like the start of term yeah and i went back for like two weeks so this is september-ish yeah and then um i just remember i was back for two weeks and then i randomly just started getting the dizzy feeling again and 
I remember like sitting in a lecture and like trying to concentrate on what they were talking about and like I just felt like really ill again like almost like I felt right at the beginning and then it all just kind of came back and then I ended up having to get like picked up and then come home and then it kind of just all started again like all the same symptoms and then yeah <laughs> so was this the start of your second year uh yeah this was meant to be the start of my second year so you bounced through your first year and then the second year just became an impossibility mm. yeah yeah and then there's nothing yeah. intrinsic about university because your first year you, you you did that as normal that was fine mm. yeah yeah that was fine that was fine yeah and then what about over winter adam how did that go um so well we're still there now i suppose <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so i think it kind of like basically i was just having like all the same symptoms and i was basically just i was pretty much in bed like all the time for quite a long period of time um and I was, yeah through tiredness or dizziness or um just just because like i just felt so so like ill like and like even just getting out of bed to do anything would make the symptoms like 10 times worse so and i i like i like i don't know i like didn't really know what to do at that point because you were stuck yeah like all the doctors are saying like i don't know like it should just go away on its own but then it was just like not getting any better so i just yeah <laughs> so all the doctors were wrong a little bit yeah yeah no quite a lot by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah were you referred to a cardiologist adam um so i was oh yeah so basically this is when I kind of like I ended up making a GP's appointment just like a normal GP appointment because sure. oh yeah I remember I started at this point I was starting to get quite a lot of um shortness of breath so like it would like I'd be breathing normally but it felt like I like wasn't getting enough oxygen or anything um, so I made like an emergency GP appointment um, and then that's when so they like measured my heart listened to my breathing and stuff and they were like I think my heart rate was like 140 beats per minute and then um, my blood pressure was like 170 over 110 or something like that and um so exceptionally high for a young fit guy like you exceptionally high yeah and um she just kept asking like are you 100 percent sure like um this isn't anxiety and i was like yeah 100 percent. like this has been going on for so long and um so then i think she was she was also really confused like how I'd been to A and E so many times, and they hadn't tried to do any like any more tests. When this I had is like, GP. yeah, like she she was like seemed quite angry. Um, As indeed am I. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so she thought like I could even have like blood clots like in my lungs or something, or like I can't remember what it's called pulmonary pulmonary embolism. <laughs> yeah like she she thought i might have something like that um so then she got me to do some more like blood tests and i had a chest x-ray and then everything came back um completely normal but then she said like she wanted to refer me to a cardiologist but that it could take like up to like eight months to end up seeing one so then we ended up just seeing a private cardiologist at least your gp took you seriously yeah yeah that was like and i'd, I'd already i'd already been having symptoms for like five months at that point 
It must have been quite reassuring to have a medic actually listen to you and believe you. Yeah, definitely. The first time after eight months. Yeah, like, she was probably the first, like, doctor that was like, yeah, this does seem a bit weird, like... Life, yeah. I think that's one way to put it, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you saw a cardiologist? Um, yeah, I ended up seeing a cardiologist. This this is like quite recently now because mm-hmm. it took quite a while to organize it all. And um I had um an ECG and then um, an echocardiogram mm-hmm. and um, the cardiologist said um, everything looks normal except for the fact that your heart rate is like 140 beats per minute and that Which was like not normal no like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, like that's when I was like lying down as well so I was like quite relaxed and um, I think he was saying like it could be um, POTS, I think it's called. Yeah. So this is the postural orthostatic tachycardic. But basically, it means your you know, postural orthostatic tachycardia mm. syndrome, I guess. So, yeah. so but basically, it means your heart rate just goes really, really fast when you stand up. Yeah, yeah. And that's what was happening. Your heart rate was going even faster when you were standing. Yeah, so like... It's weird because my heart rate, even when I'm lying down, is still really high. And that's still the same now. Your heart rate's fat fast now. Yeah, like, like, um, because I have like a um, finger, finger doodah. A thing, yeah. You clip on your finger. Yeah, peripheral yeah. pulse oximeter. Yeah, and um, the other day I was literally just like brushing my teeth. And started to feel a bit dizzy, so I was like, "Oh, I'm going to measure my heart rate." And I think it was going from like 150, and then I saw it go up to like 160, and then that started to like freak me out a bit. So then I just like lie down, and I'm pretty sure it still do. I'm pretty sure it still does that, but I'm kind of like don't really want to measure my heart rate anymore because it's just no, it, it, it weird it's... to see it. <laughs> Well, it's more than that. It's it's terrifying because it's kind of mm. so. So your heart rate is going high when you get these dizzy episodes, or so I think we can say that the dizzy ep- episodes are caused by the episodes of tachycardia. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, did the cardiologist indicate a way forward? Um. So, the cardiologist. Um, I ended up having like a. 24 hour heart monitor put yeah. on 24 hour memo yeah yeah and then um he prescribed me evabradine to like oh, um, what, what what do you know what that's for um it basically it just slows your heart rate down um okay. and he just he just prescribed that so like he still says like he doesn't know what the problem is but like i might as well take that to lower my heart rate in the meantime and then he still hasn't got back but i think i've got another appointment um and having to pay for the second appointment as well um i think so i'm not sure i've like i'm kind of like splitting all the costs like with my parents and stuff because they're trying to help out as well but of course yeah <laughs> um but you're still talking about a lot of money here that the NHS really should be looking after you. This is so disappointing. Mm. So you're kind of waiting for the cardiologist to get back. Is, is this new drug seeming to have any effect? Um, it's helping a little bit, I think. But like, I'm still having like all the same symptoms. But it is helping a little bit, I think. Yeah. Are you still getting the pain? Um. So I haven't had the pain in like three days, but like a couple days ago, I was getting it quite badly. Yeah. Does um, the pain respond to any particular painkiller, Adam? Have you t- I guess you've tried the usual thing. You've tried ibuprofen, <laughs> paracetamol, and um, no, I, I don't think it. I don't think it gets any better. 
um, for anything like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're still in limbo, basically, aren't you? Kind of waiting to see what this cardiologist says and unable to resume your university career. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much at the moment. Not good. <laughs> it certainly is not a good situation. Mm. I mean, is there any talk of referring you to uh, anywhere else, you know, a long COVID clinic or something like that? Um, well, I mean, like none of the doctors have said, like, have said anything like that or like they haven't really said like what I should do. I mean, not this is caused by COVID, but it seems to be that sort of area of. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I think like. There's definitely like quite a lot of similarities between long COVID and whatever mm. whatever reaction this is. But <laughs> have you knownly had COVID, Adam? You never. Um, I'm like I'm almost a hundred percent sure that I've never had COVID because um when my symptoms started. I initially thought, oh, this could be COVID sure. related. So I was um, I was doing like lateral flow tests every single day and they were always negative. Mm. And I was around my family the whole time and um, none of them had COVID at that time. So I don't really think I don't really think it would be to do with that. But obviously your doctors have done an antibody test. Um, no, they haven't. <laughs> It's just that they haven't. No. So your doctors haven't bothered to find out whether you've had COVID or not. Um, no. Like I've I've had. They've told me to get like certain blood tests, but they've never done an, an antibody, antibody test. test. Like I I didn't even think to even ask to do that. Like, because I I've just been. Well, why should you? You, you, you? You're the one that's suffering. Yeah. I can't feel when I'm suffering and I've worked in healthcare all my life. There's no reason why you should be able to. It's not. So it's, it's very much a wait and see situation. Um... Yeah, I think so. Definitely. <laughs> well, I wish there was something I could say to, to guide you forward, but um, I think we'd wait, wait, yeah, we'll wait and see what's happening. Oh yeah, it's uh... mm. right. <laughs> I don't, th 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 this is this is a syndrome that quite a few others have been describing. Yeah. Um, and watching this, I suspect many others will recognise, as you recognise uh, Georgia Rose, who, who was uh, courageous enough to. Uh, publicize that and yeah you're courageous enough to publicize it and uh m m many other people will relate to that and hopefully this is going to help us get towards the stage where this is recognized for the biological syndrome that i'm convinced it is yeah definitely so we certainly appreciate it adam is there anything else you feel that you want people to know about um i'll just say like if you have the same thing like try not to worry too much because i think there were points where like i was like almost certain like i was gonna die because it felt so bad but then i i haven't so if you're going through the same thing like just don't don't worry too much kind of thing like i have gotten a bit better as time's gone on so yeah. Yeah. But I think we have to take medical advice immediately. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you have any of these features, um, do not delay seeking uh, any medical advice that uh, you're going to need in that situation. Yeah, definitely. Adam, so it's uh, it's really good of you to come on and, and it's not easy talking about your suffering. And I know I know I mentioned a couple of minor things I've had and it, it is it's quite actually hard to do it. So yeah <laughs> what you've just done is is a remarkably courageous thing and um <laughs> really no really really it is it's uh it's it's a very very hard thing to do mm. 
but but it's one people are relating to and i suspect you're going to see that in the in the comments yeah definitely so, um, would, would i mean at any time you want to come back and up, update us on your condition adam please do um yeah definitely yeah like thank you for having me on as well like i i didn't really expect you were going to reply or anything but yeah <laughs> Cheers for having me on and everything. No, no, it's it's uh, you, you. You're the one that's suffering. It's you. It's your nobility that's 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 allowed you to share this. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let, let, let's talk again. But for now, Adam, we. I mean, to say I wish you well is is trite. But uh, <laughs> well, but I'm not quite sure what else to say. To be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say one thing to healthcare providers: um, pain is what your patient says it is, existing when they say it does. And uh, most of them know that. I think you maybe had a bit of a bad sample, but um, mm. if, if we don't believe our patients, then then why bother taking histories? <laughs> Adam, th th thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.